we're going to talk about some important gravitational field equations. Now this section right here, um, I think it, it's one of those where the equations and things look really tough, or maybe challenging, but once you get used to them, they're actually way better than you think. And in fact, the questions that you're asked to solve on exams are relatively straightforward once you learn what each of the variables means. So we're going to start with gravitational potential energy, which is something you've probably seen before, like you know EP equals MGH that you've learned, for example, on Earth. But now we're going to be going into more detail and generalizing it. I put this in here with Felix Baumgartner, who did this with the Red Bull. It was awesome. He jumped out of a, a big inflatable balloon here at pretty much the highest anyone's ever jumped. It was awesome. Anyway, uh, gravitational potential energy, we're going to define it as this. It's going to be, this sounds a bit weird now, it's the work done against gravity... Okay, to assemble a system from an infinite separation of the components. So what that means is that if you've got some sort of uh, object uh, that's been sort of built or whatever it is, um, you start off at infinity and you bring them back to where you are. Because of that, I mean, at infinity, uh, we're going to actually say this, that the potential, the gravitational potential is going to be zero when the R value, in other words, when you're a distance of infinity. So that means way, way, way over here, the potential is going to be zero. But then if you're supposed to go uh, something less than zero, that's going to make it negative. So we're going to first of all have this equation here that's from our data booklet, and it goes like this. EP equals, remember I said it's going to be a negative. It's going to be G M1 M2 over R. So if we're going to define our variables, well, EP is the gravitational potential energy. Energy is measured in joules. We, of course, have our capital G, our gravitational constant. Now, M1 and M2, those are the different masses. So that's going to be in kilograms. And we're going to have R as the distance that you've moved them. So that's going to be in meters. Now, what I want to focus on, though, is what EP is, so the potential energy, what it's proportional to. It's proportional to minus 1 over R. Now, if you remember, what does a graph of 1 over x, let's say, look like? If this is y, this is x. A graph of 1 over x looks like this, doesn't it? Like that. But a minus means it just gets flipped, so it goes like this. So that's what I'm going to try to draw right now, is something that goes like this. I'm going to see if I can draw it nice and smooth. Something like this, E. P. It's asymptotic. In other words, as you get uh, further to the right, for example, it goes higher. And it's asymptotic over here. It can't be negative. Uh, well, it can't go past this value right here, at least. That's because uh, the radius shouldn't be negative. Um, so this right here is how we're going to define it. And remember, then we're going to define it as the potential energy. It seems weird. but The gravitational potential energy is going to be zero at infinity, which means anything to the left of zero must therefore be a negative. And of course, then as EP increases, in other words, as we go up in EP, you know, maybe I'll draw it like this right here, as we go up in EP, then we have to go right, like this right here, right? So if we go up, then we go right. And if we increase that, we say work is done against gravity. That's how we're going to define it. Okay, so just to go back here, so we were just defining this one here as EP, which is in joules. I'm going to do that because on the next one right here, which is gravitational potential. This one right here is going to be a different one. We're call, going to call it Vg, and we're going to see what kind of units we're going to use for it. Okay, so we're going to define this. So first we have this thing called gravitational potential. Now it seems, this is a kind of confusing seeming one, because you're like, what, isn't it just like potential energy? No, 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 you're dividing by mass. Okay, so it's a work done, that's a form of energy, per unit mass to bring an object from infinity. Okay, well that means then that we have our equation from our data booklet, which goes like this. So it's going to be just like the uh, gravitational potential energy, so minus gmm over r, except we divide by m, so it's just going to be gm over r, like this right here. This is going to be one of them. Now because we're talking about work done, I think it's maybe a good idea to put that one here. So we have an equation for work done as well, which just goes like this. It's work done is m times delta vg. So both of these are in your data booklet, so you don't have to memorize them. And let's look at all the variables. So W is the work done to move a mass. Well, that must be in joules. 
M's, those are masses, so that's in kilograms. R is a distance move, so that must be in meters. We have our gravitational constant, sure. But let's look at the units then for this thing right here. So if we're going to get V by itself, do you notice we have work divided by M? Like if I was trying to isolate this one right here, I could divide by M. So I'd have work done over mass, which would be in joules per kilogram. And that's the units we're going to use here. So joules per kilogram here. Um, I'll make a nicer G, I think. There we go, so joules per kilogram. Now that means I'm going to put that here as well, right? So that's our new unit. Now we have to know is joules per kilogram. So what do we do with this one right here? Well, if we're going to draw this right here, well, it's still, just like before, we can say that Vg is proportional to minus 1 over R. So that means it has a similar shape to what the, um, the uh, gravitational potential energy did. So this is going to be called Vg. So same idea here, that, uh, except we're going to say, well, there's no work done if there's no change in V. So in other words, if you haven't moved anywhere along this curve, then you've done no work. That should make sense right here. And of course, we're going to define again Vg is zero at r equals infinity, just like we did before with the energy. And we can also say that, hey, as you go up, for example, here, then you go right, just like we said before. So you've gone, um, you've done work against gravity. And now some people uh, like to call this like, we call this like a potential well. So you have to think about like if you want to get out of somewhere, like in other words, if you're kind of stuck in the um, potential well of a planet, in order to get away from the planet, you need to go up in gravitational potential that gets you further out. So see that? So by we sort of say like you climb up this potential well by going up, then you end up going to the right. Or by contrast, if you go down, then you go left. So that's at least a way to look at it. So now let's revisit gravitational field strength, which is our good old fashioned uh, little G here. But this time we're going to define it in terms of gravitational potential. So it's going to be a delta VG, this gravitational potential, divide that by delta R. Now, gravitational field strength, do you remember it from before? It's going to be in uh, newtons per kilogram. Then we're going to have our change in gravitational potential. Remember from before, gravitational potential is in joules per kilogram. And of course, then we have a change in distance. Well, that's just going to be in meters. So finally, we're going to define these equipotential lines. Now, what are those? Well, those are places where the gravitational potential, think about this, equi means same, potential is potential. So places where the potential is the same. So places where Vg is the same. So if this is the Earth, and I want to draw my, let's say my field lines, maybe I'll draw my field lines, remember my gravitational field lines, we were learning about this before, something like this here, field lines always go radially inwards, let's say, like this. Okay, so I'll maybe even draw this right here of my field lines. Those are in blue. Well, if those are places uh, with my field lines, then I'm going to draw my um, places, my equipotentials are going to be perpendicular to that. So that means they're going to be at 90 degrees. So kind of here is 90 degrees, here is 90 degrees. Basically, it's going to make, it's kind of hard to tell you. I'm trying to draw it, but it's something like this right here. So these are here going to be my equipotentials. Now, what does that mean? That means with the VG, in other words, the gravitational potential is the same. So that means if you're somewhere right along this one right here, for example, I mean, I'm trying to draw a circle. I'm just bad at drawing circles. <laughs> but uh, there it goes. These right here, for example, if you walk along this right here, you haven't changed any gravitational potential. Therefore, you've done no work. So that's the important thing right here, right? And that's because, remember this equation then for work done. Work done was equal to, um, what was it? It was m times delta vg. So if this right here is zero, then so is this. I hope that makes sense. And of course, uh, so this is an important piece right here just to know how we're drawing these equipotentials.